Hi everyone, it's John. Welcome to one of the very few Friday reads that you'll ever see on this channel. I think I did one about a month ago, but I do them so rarely because I'm such an incredibly slow reader that if I did them every single Friday, I would probably be showing you the same book over and over and over again. But a few things have changed up since I did the last one. So I thought I would talk about a few of the things that I've uh, finished and started uh, reading within the past week or week and a half or so. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that I just finished last weekend was uh, a novel by Ian Forrester uh, called Morris. I think most people probably know Morris as uh, Forrester's quote-unquote gay novel. Um, he wrote it in the teens, back in the 19-teens, but wasn't published until the year after he died. He thought it was just too, uh, the public wasn't ready for it. And he might have, <laughs> might have been on to something there. Um, I will, of course, as with everything I do, give you a, a full-throated, fully fleshed-out review of it. But I have to say, uh, I the only other Forrester I'd ever read was Howard's End, which I read many years, like 20 years ago, and didn't really remember too much from it other than um, under that that sort of famous preface, which is, uh, um, of course, now I'm forgetting it under pressure, but uh, Strangers Unite or something like that. It's about, you know, people being able to mix freely and get, get, get to know other people outside of your social class and your sort of cloistered uh, existence. But there are a few other things I've been reading. Um, one of them I was just too anxious to, uh, to sort of eager, I guess that's the better word, to keep from picking up. So I picked it up. I shouldn't be showing you this until... Um, installment two uh, next week, but um, it's just one book. It's uh, Barbara S Barbara Stolberg Rillinger's The Holy Roman Emperor, The Holy Roman Empire: A Short History. It's it's quite short. It's mostly about the empire, uh, say from around fifteen hundred to its dissolution in. Uh, uh, in 1806, during the Napoleonic Wars. And um, with an emphasis on how the empire was held together by um, really little more than sort of custom, uh, a bunch of um, like symbolic, uh, symbolic actions, um, it's it, it looks really interesting, and uh, you know, I've, I've read the first chapter only, so I'm 15 pages into a 160-page book, but um, this is what, just one of those things that happened to drop into my box when I got everything from Princeton that I already wanted. So, there's that. Um, this is a book I already showed everyone. Um, Peg sent it to me a couple of months ago, and I am about halfway through it. Yeah, of course, I, I put the I, I take the cover off to read it, and then when I put it back on to show it in the video, I put it in, I put it on upside down. But um, here's the cover. It's uh, conservatism, uh, conservation, uh, Conservatism, The Fight for a Tradition, by Edmund Fawcett. I'm pretty much halfway through it. Um, really, really fascinating, thorough, well, well, well-researched history of conservatism, and then how it sort of acts itself out in England, France, Germany, and the United States for four broad periods of time starting around 1800 and bringing us up through pretty much contemporary times, the, the end of the 20th century. 
Um, really, really great. Especially good if you have a thorough, really thorough understanding of French and German 19th century um, history. Um, that can be a little bit tenuous for for many American readers, but um, it's an education. Um, and the other thing I think I may have shown, but I'm only a little bit into, is this 66 pages into a um, nearly 600 page book. It's the Civilization of Europe in the Renaissance by John Hale. I'm, uh, like I said, a, a tenth of the way into the book, and he's still talking about uh, Europe's changing conception of itself and how Europeans are only really for the first time starting to think of themselves as Europeans instead of um, Italians or French or Germans or whatever else. Um, he hasn't really gotten to anything. Uh, there's quite a bit about cartography and map making. Um, he hasn't really gotten to anything uh, like the cultural stuff of the Renaissance, you know, uh, writing, humanism, um, art, sculpture, poetry, anything like that. It's um, So I wonder how long it's going to take to actually get there. Um, so that's what I have recently finished or am reading. And we'll be reading uh, well into the weekend and past it. But yesterday I also got four books in the mail from Hamilton Books. And just wanted to show these to you very quickly. Um, sometimes when I get small numbers of books in, they sort of slip by the radar. And I didn't want this to happen to these since it had some really, really interesting looking stuff in it I thought you might be interested in. Um was really surprised to find this. Um, this is uh, Christopher Hills, uh, The World Turned Upside Down, uh, Radical Ideas During the English Revolution. And Christopher Hill was um, a British Marxist. He did much of his work on 17th and uh, well, 16th and 17th century English, um, English history, social, cultural history. Um, this one, like the title says, is mostly about the revolution and the, the schools of, of, um, of revolt that you see pop out of the revolution, like the levelers, the diggers, the ranters, uh, the Muggletonians. The early Quakers, etc. Um, I thought this would be a great sort of primer for uh, over at Verso Books, which is a, a, a publisher of uh, sort of left of center, sometimes radical, not sometimes not so radical um, history, uh, feminist stuff, a lot of theory. They have six or eight books by Christopher Hill, um, which are much more detailed sort of monography um, types of things. Like uh, there, there's one, I think, entirely dedicated to uh, Milton's role in, uh, the, in the English Revolution. Uh, so <laughs> I really want to read those. So I thought a good sort of um, getting my toes wet would be reading this instead. And this is just one of those, it is a Marxist approach. So um, it's very bottom up uh, social history from what I understand. But um, I thought it would do a, a great deal to sort of introduce me to some of the things he might be writing about in those um, other books. Give me sort of a, a grounding. Um, I came across a really, really uh, lovely hardback version of a biography by Stephen Budiansky on Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr., A Life in War, Love, and Ideas. Um, and uh, they really should have Jr. on there. I mean, he had 
He had a father by, I think, who had the exact same name. And I, I mean, I know the mustache gives him away, but um, th this was the Supreme Court justice for 30 odd years or so. Um, so, uh, you know, goes all the way back to his, uh, um, you know, his, his forays into the Civil War and, you know, the, the, the roles that he played with, uh, with the James brothers and, you know, other um, people who would sort of become important in the, the pragmatists a branch of philosophy, uniquely, pretty much uniquely American branch of philosophy, but um, looks looks wonderful and, and obviously a fascinating uh, figure too. Uh, wasn't my only biography. Um, for some reason, way behind the curve on this one, uh, David Blight's biography of uh, Frederick Douglass. Uh, wasn't anticipating on it being ni nearly 900 pages with notes, but um, I'm glad that it is because uh, when I start get getting around to reading about um, black 19th century public intellectuals, uh, I think I want to start with, uh, with Frederick Douglass and then use that podcast that I mentioned a few weeks ago, History of Philosophy Without Any Gaps. It's uh, Africana and uh, African diaspora series to <coughs> sort of um, read around him and, uh, and within, you know, his, his range of interests, which was pretty much everything. But um, that's going to be over the next few years. If this channel is still up and around, um, probably dozens of more books in and of itself. And this is uh, a book by someone that I uh, used to see all over the news, still occasionally do. This is The Future is History, How, to How Totalitarianism Reclaimed Russia by uh, Masha Gessen. Uh, Masha Gessen, I believe, was, was born and raised in Russia, but eventually came to the United States and... Um, ever since the rise of Vladimir Putin has been a, a very outspoken critic of the way that he, <coughs> he runs Russia, basically. Um, this is, uh, doesn't look like it's exactly light reading as far as content wise, but she is a journalist. So maybe it'll be a sort of a bit of a, <coughs> a good book to break up, you know, a thousand page long biography of Frederick Douglass or, you know, um, a history of the Holy Roman Empire, something like that. Um, she, she always seems incredibly smart, uh, when I see her talk. So, uh, they used to have one or two more of her books on Hamilton books and then they disappeared. So I'll be keeping an eye out for the others if I, uh, enjoy this. All right. Well, that's pretty much all I have for uh, this Friday, uh, May 21st, 2021. I will see you next week again with installment two from Princeton. See you later.